Republicans united, Democrats divided. Sound familiar? Here we go again. This time it's over the issue of tax cuts for the rich. This afternoon, the president hammered the GOP for protecting the wealthiest Americans. I am urging the leaders of the other party to stop holding middle class tax cuts hostage and extend this relief to families immediately. That's good, that's good, but at least 38 House Democrats are now breaking ranks with the president, calling for at least one more year of tax breaks for the very rich. The lawmakers, most of whom face tough re-election fights this fall, are urging Speaker Pelosi to maintain the status quo at least temporarily. How protecting the rich is going to help them in their elections is entirely unclear. Letting tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans expire has a 17-point advantage in the polls. This is the one issue that can help them beat the Republicans. But in a typical Democratic move, they want to help the Republicans beat the Democrats by agreeing with GOP ideology. Luckily, Pelosi is not going along. She sided with the president and told conservative Democrats, no deal. One, it's fair to say that you're not open for that one to two year extension compromise? Uh, not for the wealthy, no. Your position on that's my position. Again, we listen to our members, but I, I think the president gave us exactly what we needed, clarity. And the public is with the president. That's good. Let's see how long it lasts. Some Republicans, meantime, are pushing for a temporary two-year extension of tax cuts for the top 2%. Gee, I wonder what happens in two years. Oh yeah, we get a new president, and if it's a Republican, he'll extend the tax cuts for the rich indefinitely. You see, that's how this game is played. As the president would say, let's be clear. History shows us the richest Americans don't put tax savings back into the economy. They put it in their pockets. After George W. Bush's tax cuts, the savings rate went up compared to the spending spree inspired by President Clinton's tax increase. More money into the economy with tax increases, you get it? Even a one-year extension of the Bush tax cuts for the rich would cost us $39 billion. That's another huge hole in the budget that the Republicans and conservative Democrats pretend to care so much about. Here's what the Democrats are never going to do. Win an argument if they don't make their own case. The numbers are in. Tax cuts for the rich do not stimulate the economy. The polls are in. The American people are sick of giving more tax cuts to the rich. The only people left unconvinced are the Democrats who have the most to gain if they just use those facts against their Republican opponents. Let's see if they're that smart. Wish us luck. <laughs> Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Robert Andrews from New Jersey. He's a member of the House Banking Committee and sides with the president in this fight. Which, I do. Which, in my opinion, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Congressman Andrews. Uh, what's wrong with your party? Uh, can they not read poll numbers? 17-point uh, advantage mm -hmm. if you say no more tax cuts for the rich? Well, how, how does that not well, a winning political strategy? I can't speak for the people that want to extend the tax cuts for people uh, in that 250 and up category, but I'm not one of them. Uh, you know, I'll tell you something that we tried this in the Bush years, and it caused the disaster that we have. It adds to the deficit. It doesn't add to economic growth. When, when, when Under President Clinton, we actually cut the deficit by a small increase in taxes on the wealthy, invested in education and trade, and the economy exploded. So this is not some untested argument. I think we should put this on the floor for a vote, extend the tax cuts for people making less than a quarter of a million dollars, and vote yes or no. Make everybody pull out their card and vote, and I think we'll win that vote. Congressman Andrews, if you split the bill and you say, hey, here, we're going to vote on the middle class tax cuts, and then we're going to vote on tax cuts for the rich, does that let the Republicans off the hook? Because then they could just, hey, vote for the middle class tax cut and say, oh, I voted for that, and then turn around and say, oh, you see the Democrats raise taxes. Is that a really bad political strategy? I don't know that it is. I, I never mind putting something up for a vote because I, does think it may, I do think it makes people declare their positions. And I would like very much this election debate to be about whether people making more than a quarter of a million dollars a year need lower taxes. I'm not going to vote for that. And I think in a country that's borrowing money from the Chinese and can't uh, pay teachers and can't pay police officers all over the country, that's a debate that we ought to have. So my inclination is put them both up for a vote, the 250 and under, 
and the 250 and over and let people have their say and let people show their constituents where they stand. So what do you do with these conservative Democrats? Because the leadership is in a tight spot here. They seem to have, you know, by my <coughs> estimation, your estimation, the right strategy, uh, which is, hey, let's vote for tax cuts for the middle class, but not for the rich. But you got 38 House Democrats in rebellion. What can well, you do with that? You know, you have to let them work their will and work their conscience. I mean, I, I, I don't want to second guess anybody's motives here. We are a broad caucus. We got a lot of different ideological points of view. But I think we should make people go on the record. Let's take a vote. That's what they pay us to do. And I don't see how anybody can justify the borrowing, as you say, nearly $40 billion so the wealthiest 2 or 3% of people in this country can get a break. If it really promoted economic growth, maybe you'd say so. The facts don't support that. In the Bush years, the economy grew by 2.1%. The Clinton years, it grew by 39 Sixty-four percent of the national debt of this country was run up under Reagan and the two Bushes. So what are we talking about here? Republicans giving, giving the country lectures on deficit and debt reduction? Give me a break. Congressman Andrews, you say you don't want to question people's motives, but I do. Uh, okay. So, I mean, because I don't get it. I don't get it. Conservative Democrats appear to be wrong on the policy. The economic numbers you gave, the ones we gave in the intro, they're wrong on the politics. It's a huge political advantage for Democrats. And they're helping the Republican Party by letting them off the hook by agreeing with them. So what's their rationale? The only thing I can come up with is they also want to collect a lot of campaign contributions from the rich and from large I corporations. I don't really think it's that. I, I, look, people have different views within our party, and, and I respect that. But I do think we have to put this up for a vote. You know, some people have said, let's duck this issue till after the election. I think that's the wrong path. I think putting this on the floor, maybe making people take a position... Uh, is the right way to go, and then the voters can sort this out on Election Day and decide which direction they think the country should go in. All right, Congressman Robert Andrews from New Jersey, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.